G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at how to capture another photo. And I'm not really sure how we're going to sort of categorize this one. It's maybe a still life or a product photo or a food photo. I'm not really sure, but it looks pretty cool. So we're going to walk through the steps on how I captured it and also the editing process as well. It's a fairly simple photo to take, though maybe an intermediate level in editing, but we'll get through it together, I'm sure. Anyway, let's jump into the tutorial and see what we come up with. So there are a couple of techniques we're going to use in this photo today. We're going to use long exposures and light painting, and then we're also going to use compositing once we get into Photoshop. There are a few different materials you need to take this sort of photo, a camera obviously, and some sort of short telephoto lens, I'd say between the 50 to 100 mil mark would be good, I'm using a 90 mil. We also need a tripod because we're doing long exposure, and you'll need a phone too, so you can use that to light paint. And then we've also got the glass, the water that's in the glass, and the lime as well as our props. So the first thing you want to do is just get up from the seat now and go to your fridge or your freezer and pop some water inside. We want that water to be nice and cold for when we're pouring it in the glass, we can build up some condensation. So do that first and then while you're doing the other steps, that'll start to chill. Next, we need to jump into Photoshop and create our coloured background so we can shine this through the glass of water to create that rainbow sort of effect. So all I did was pop into Photoshop, added some different coloured rectangles, and then I played around with the filters a bit in order to alter the patterns and the shapes that were being created. It's a good idea to have a few options, so change the colours up a bit, change the filters and the patterns a bit, and that way when you go and take the photo, you've got a few things to choose from, and you can just choose what sort of looks best once you get down to shoot. Next, we're going to set up the scene that we'll be shooting. So we'll grab our camera and tripod and grab a glass and a table and we'll go get this organized. Now, depending on the sort of table that you're using, you'll get different kinds of reflections. I'm using a white sort of semi-glossy table, so it'll pick up some of the reflections of the light through the glass. If you're using a dark table or a matte finished table, then you're going to get a different kind of reflection. Just keep that in mind. Another good option would be a mirror. So if you've got a little mirror, maybe try that. Um, but as long as there's some sort of gloss to it, you should get a reflection on the table itself. And you'll be able to see this while you're shining the light through, so you'll know whether it's working or not. You want to set your camera up so it's about eye height with the glass, but use your instincts and just sort of see what feels best for you. I'm going to get as close to the glass as possible while still leaving a little bit of room for the lime and also the reflections too. Uh, getting close will mean I have the biggest, best quality image that I have possible, but I want to create a minimalist look in the end, and I can just do that by increasing the canvas size once we get the photo into Photoshop. The last thing we need to do before we can get to shooting is to get our lime ready. So grab your lime, chop it in the middle, and then cut yourself off a nice thin slice. Around about 2 mil should do the trick. We're going to shine light through this, so we want it to be thin enough that we can get some light through the actual fruit. Okay, so we're ready to start shooting now. We want to go grab that water, hopefully it's nice and cold. If it's not cold enough yet, then just chill out for a few moments and wait for it to cool down. You want it to be as cold as possible. Pour the water in the glass, and as soon as you pour that water in the glass, you should start to get some condensation on the outside. Now we want to get focus on the glass, and we want to do this with manual focus. Once the lights go off, it's going to be next to impossible to see what's actually happening. And if you're trying to use autofocus, the camera will just keep focus hunting. It's not going to work. So grab your focus, just focus on the front lip of that glass, and then lock it in. And then that way, when the lights go off, we'll be all set. You also want to pop your camera onto self-timer too, because you want to be able to press down that shutter button and then run around to the other side of the table before you start taking the shot. You could also use one of the apps, I guess, if you wanted to, or a remote release. Uh, I suppose with the apps though, you're going to be using your phone as the background too, so it's going to be a little bit hard to juggle back and forth between the camera app and taking the photo and the background that we're using to actually light paint. Now it's time to start taking some photos. We want to turn all the lights off and then we want to get our exposure. Best to use manual exposure for this just so you've got a bit more control and things don't change between shots. I was using the brightest screen that I had on my phone and it's important to use the brightest screen you can have for your background just so you're limiting the amount of time that the camera is taking a photo for. And this was giving me at f16 uh, exposure of about 2 seconds using an ISO of 200. I have could have gone down to ISO 100 and taken a bit of a longer photo but just remember that you've got to hold the phone still while you're taking the shot otherwise you'll get parts of the phone showing through and I found two seconds was a little bit easier to manage than what four seconds was. So now we're going to press the shutter button, run around, place our phone screen behind the actual glass, 
wait for the photo to be taken, hold that phone nice and still, and you want to repeat this process a few different times because little movements of the screen will sort of change up the look of the pattern too. Be careful when you're taking this photo and make sure that you're not losing any color detail in any of the channels. When we're using really bright, saturated colors like this, it can be quite easy to clip one of the color channels, whether it's red, green, or blue. So just check them after you've taken the photo and make any adjustments to your exposure if you need to. Once you're happy with this, we want to pop on the line and start to capture that. We're going to take the line with two different photos in two different ways. You can turn the lights back on now, go grab your lime and just slice it down the middle there so you can slide it over the edge of the glass and pop it over the lip about halfway between the front and the back. Once you've done this, we want to refocus the camera in manual focus again and this time focus on the lime. Even at f16, it's likely that the lime will be out of focus if you focused on the front of the glass. So grab your focus again, and this way everything will seem nice and sharp once we blend it all together. The first photo we'll take with our lime will be shining light through it. Now for this, you want to pull up just a blank white screen on your phone. I was just using the Notes app on my iPhone because it was nice and white, and even though there was a bit of text on the bottom, it was fine. For this photo here, the settings you'll be using for your previous photo should work well too. But just keep an eye on your highlights and make sure that you're not losing any color detail in the middle of the line. It doesn't matter so much if you're blowing out the details on the screen, but the lime is important to preserve. Take the photo and hold the white screen behind the lime so that you're shining light through it. Give this a couple of tries if you need to, but once you've gotten the shot, we're ready to go to the next step. We've got one more photo we need to take, and it's likely that you'll need to extend the shutter speed for this one. I went up to 10 seconds to get me a well-exposed image, and we want to keep our screen on that blank white screen, so on the notes pad, which is what I was using, and this time while we're taking the photo, we want to brush that light over the front of the line. So you start taking the photo and then you want to move the screen back and forth so you're illuminating the line from the front and just imagine you're sort of painting on that light. We're building up that exposure over time as we brush the light back and forth and the reason we sort of brush it back and forth is so we get a nice soft even illumination over the front of that line. So I've got a bit of choice as far as the photos go and you can see how the pattern and the shape of the colors changes slightly between each shot so it's a good idea to take a few photos. I also just wanted to point out the difference in the texture you get depending on the level of condensation. At the very start you'll get a very soft haze like this here and then it moves to a more textured beaded water effect. You can choose whichever one you prefer, I'm going to go with the more textured one for today. So we'll select that photo and also grab the two photos of the lime and we're going to do a couple of edits in Adobe Camera Raw first and then we'll move into Photoshop and stitch all of them together. First thing I'm going to do on this photo here is just bring the highlights down a smidge just to bring a bit of richness back into that color. That looks pretty good there. And this one here should be fine. I'm not going to make any changes to that. The last one here, I am also going to bring the highlights down a fair bit to bring a bit more color into the flesh of that lime. And I'm also just going to crank the shadows and the blacks up too. If I need to down the track, I'll add a bit more contrast in. I'm going to leave these as smart objects so I can always come back and forth with Adobe Camera Raw and make changes if I need to while in Photoshop. Let's select all of these now, open them up and get them into the same document in Photoshop. All right, so I've got my three photos in Photoshop. We've got one, two, three, and that's the order that I want to have them in. We're going to hide those lime layers to start with and we're going to work on this photo here. First thing we're going to do is create a new layer just by hitting Control Shift and N. And we'll use this layer to clone out some of the things that we don't want in the final image. Let's start with these two little sections down here. So these are some reflections created by the screen and we can clone these out but we don't need to be super tidy with this stuff either because we're going to use a levels layer to hide a lot of these dark spots in a second. Next thing I'm going to do is add in a levels layer and I'm going to increase the black point to around about 20. The idea is to get it so all these parts on the table here blend out into the pure black background. That's looking pretty good. I'm just going to go back in and tidy up that mask, uh, the clone rather, a little bit more. Beautiful. Now I only need the levels layer really affecting this part of the image. I don't need it affecting the whole thing. So I'm going to invert the mask there, 
grab my eraser again and just paint in the sections that I actually need. Okie dokie, that's looking pretty good. So before and after. Now what we'll do is we'll tidy up some of the blemishes on the glass. So if we zoom in, we've got a couple of spots up here we wanna get rid of, this little smudge, uh, some weird things happening with the droplets here. And I also wanna get rid of this part of the condensation which looks a little bit not so nice up the top there. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty quick and easy job, but it's doing the trick. And that's our before and our after. Nice and neat. So now we're going to jump in and start working on our lime photos. Okay, let's start working on our limes now. Now the first thing I notice is that the lime photos are slightly off from the bottom photo. So we need to line these up properly first. Actually, let's go in and we'll mask these limes out to start with. So I'm going to grab the object selection tool, grab this layer here, and I'm actually selected that one there, and pop a mask on that, and we'll do the same thing for this one too. Grab that, and pop on a mask. The object selection tool normally does a pretty good job at this. And then what I'm gonna do is just zoom in a bit so I can see this more clearly, and nudge these lime layers up to where they're sitting, where they should be. That's looking pretty good. All right, now we need to refine these masks a bit. So I'm going to just first remove these white fringes on the lime that are coming through from this layer here. We'll leave this layer revealed and I'll grab my erase tool. And I'm just gonna very messily, oops, remove this part of the photo. Or we'll mask it out rather. Cool, okay, so that's looking a bit better. Now what we wanna do is actually hide the flesh from this top photo so that we can see the light shining through coming into the image. If you wanna check your mask, easiest way to do that is just by pressing the backslash key and that will reveal the parts of the image that have been masked. Uh, and you can see here done a fairly good job at that, so I'm happy with it. There are a few more things we need to tidy up. We need to tidy up where the lime intersects with the water and also remove some of these specular reflections on the lime and the glass and fix up the reflection on the lip of the glass here. I'm just gonna quickly zip through this for the sake of time but similar techniques to what we've used for everything else before. We're getting close, but there's one more thing we need to do, and that's to fix up this section down here. At the moment, the liquid's cutting through the lime, and really what we want is for the liquid to be somewhat transparent, so we should be able to see some of the lime through it. The way we're gonna do that is to cut out a section of the lime, pop it down here, and then we're gonna use some special blending in order to get this sort of transparency effect. We're gonna do this by first selecting these two layers and duplicating them. And then I'm going to merge them together. And that'll just give us our lime. And I'm going to press Control T to pull up the transform tool. Spin this around. And then we want to line up part of the section of the lime with this gap that we're missing here.
Okay, I'm actually going to move this layer all the way down to the bottom. So it's just sitting on top of that first glass layer there. And then what I'm going to do is change the mode from normal to soft light. If we zoom back out now, we start to get this sort of effect where we can see the lime through the liquid. Not quite there yet though. I'm going to go back into the mask and I'm just going to blend out this outer edge here so it's not quite a hard line. And I'm also going to add in a color balance layer. Create a clipping mask so it's only affecting that small section of the lime. And it's looking a little bit sort of fluorescent green at the moment. So let's try and make it more of a yellowish tinge. Now the other thing I could do too is just drop the opacity down of that layer a little bit. You don't need to see much there, just something. Just so it looks a little bit more realistic. Maybe somewhere around about there. That looks pretty good. All right, so we're getting very close. You could stop here if you wanted to. There's nothing wrong with this photo. For me, it's a little bit tight. I sort of want to go for a more minimalist look. So I want to expand the canvas a bit and, and give it a bit more negative space. I'm going to grab my crop tool and I think four by five ratio will look nice for this photo. It's really horses for courses. Maybe somewhere around about there. Give my rule of thirds a bit of a crack. And what I want to do now is just create another layer, fill layer, make it black and pop that right down on the back there. Cool, and because I've used this levels layer before to make the outside of the photo, the original photo black, that just blends into the, the uh, color fill layer quite nicely. Okay, one more thing I wanna do is just a couple of exposure adjustments. I wanna blend out this reflection a little bit so it goes darker towards the bottom. I'm gonna add in an exposure layer, pop that all the way at the top crank that down, invert it, and then grab my gradient tool and drag it. Let's see how I go first go. Actually looks pretty good. And I'm also gonna go in here with my erase tool, low opacity, and just make this section of the glass a bit darker as well. Actually going to move the exposure layer back down to here. Uh, that way it's not going to darken the lime while I'm doing this. Okay, so this is our final photo. Uh, we got there in the end, quite a few steps, maybe more than what I was expecting when we started, but pretty effective shot. And you could do this, we, we used a colored background on our phone to get that rainbow effect, but you could do this with any sort of drink really. You know, if you're making a standard cocktail and you just wanted to, to shine light through it and get this sort of minimalist photo, it would work quite fine. Just use a white screen instead. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be great if you could leave a like. If you didn't fully understand something, then pop a comment down and I'll explain it a little bit further for you. Next week, I'm going to be building a camera obscura. So if you'd want to see how to do that, I'm just going to do it in my room at home. It's a really fun activity. So make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, and that'll let you know when the next video is out. We'll leave it there for now. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you on the next one.